Hey BC, it's Nate again. Uh, back for a quick video. This is gonna be fun, I think. It's gonna be a series. Uh, the John Coltrane Family Tree, or four de four degrees of John Coltrane. I don't know how this is gonna go. I hope this is gonna be a series. Um can't promise anything. I'm not going to call it part one, and I'm not going to call it the inaugural one, because I can't guarantee that I'll be able to do another one after this. The next one will be called part two. So, for the base, you know, for continuity's sake or whatever, but I'm just going to call it Coltrane Family Tree, just to be, you know. But anyway, um, I was out shopping for uh, records today. I, just, I had a day off, and I went up to Decatur, which is in, you know, like north of Atlanta, north of Atlanta, uh, I went to Half Price Books, and I picked up, uh, Coltrane Time, which was originally released in 58. And it was called Hard Driving Jazz. Uh, I have not opened it up yet. I did listen to it. I did a... a, a there's the price. I got it for a really good price. It's a reissue uh, on um, Wax Time Records. 180 gram vinyl. Uh, I listened to it on the way home. Uh, streaming in my car, on Apple Music, and uh, I, I enjoyed it very much. Um, uh, Shifting Down, the first piece on the album, um, amazing. This is great. Ten minutes, and it's kind of a, does a big giant circle. <laughs> it's really, really good. Um, for what I want to do now, I went to Wuxtree Records, uh, Wuxtree Indicator, not Athens. The one in Athens is the, the house that REM built, or that built REM, rather. That's where everybody in REM met. They were, a couple of them were working there, and then a couple of them were customers there, and then they got together. Wuxtree Records in Athens. The one I went to was Indicator, and their jazz section is amazing. So, um... What I got was the only original pressing that they had. Everything else they had was reissues and sealed and stuff like that. They had some stuff on Impulse. And in the future, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, in the future, I'll probably end up buying reissues because trying to find um, original pressings... Um, in good shape is is really difficult and it'll probably be very pricey uh, so what I bought was um, Coltrane on a misty night oh, sorry. I'll just take that out so there's no glare not too much glare um, this is a two record compilation it was originally a had Dameron release the, the second record um, I believe it was called Mating Call and uh, the first record was a, a jam from a different from a session from a different uh, date I believe it was a bit earlier uh, the notes are on the inside are ex quite extensive uh, that's what I like about jazz records the Liner notes are always uh, extensive and very uh, informative. Therefore, I learned, hope to learn quite a bit about uh, jazz from doing this series. Um, so anyway, um, what I had in mind was I would take a record uh, by Coltrane and check out who else was playing on that record? This, uh, I don't know if you can check it out. Um, Paul Chambers, Al Cohn, Tad Dameron, of course. Uh, Red Garland, Hank Mobley, 
Zoot Sims, Art Taylor. Um, and then take another person on this album. For example, this one, I took uh, Al Cohn. Al Cohn, who played... Al Cohn. It does not say. You play tenor sax, of course. See, that's what I get for not preparing. Anyhow, he uh, played tenor sax side by side with Coltrane, of course. Coltrane was a tenor saxophone player. Uh, this is. Basically, everything that I say in here is going to be uh, common sense to people who are aware, very well aware of jazz. Uh, people who are coming, who are new to the genre and uh, uh, interested in getting into it, then I, I suppose there'll be some nuggets of information that you didn't, uh, you wouldn't know or whatever. Um, so anyhow, uh, this is called Silver Blue. Uh, uh, it has Al Cohn, Dexter Gordon on tenor sax, uh, both of them on tenor sax, Blue Mitchell on trumpet, Sam Noto on trumpet, Barry Harris on piano, Sam Jones on bass, and Louis Hayes on drums. This is on the Xanadu label, and it came out in 1977. So they call it the Xanadu Silver Series, and uh, the next one is also on the Xanadu Silver Series. Not a label I was familiar with. I didn't. I had no idea what it was. Uh, I'd imagine it was a pretty small label. Uh, I've listened to all of these, given cursory listen to them. I haven't really absorbed them. I mean, I've listened to them once, all the way through, and um, this was pretty good. Um, there's something on here called Alan's Alley, uh, which is, I believe, I wanted to say it was a, uh, Cole Porter piece, but I'm probably mistaken. Nah, I'm wrong. Um, but that's, uh, that's a really good, good piece. Um. Yes, ah, Alan's Alley. It has uh, Al Cohn and Dexter Gordon kind of playing, doing this dueling saxophones thing, going back and forth. And in, uh, the, in the liner notes make no, uh, note of it, and you can tell there's one part of the, uh, the track where um, they, they do anything you can do, I can do better. Anything you can do, I can do better. And it's, uh, it's kind of a little clever little riff or a little seg segment of the song. Um, it's pretty interesting. Um, and uh, thoroughly enjoyable. I will listen to it again. Um, now, on bass, and doing a hell of a job, was uh, Sam Harris. Um, I'm sorry, Sam Jones. Wow, this video is awful. <laughs> This is terrible. Uh, <laughs> Sam Jones. And uh, what I found next was also on the Xanadu uh, Silver Series. Sam Jones, Cello Again. A uh, clever uh, title. Uh, Sam Jones played bass on Silver Blue. And he plays cello on this. Plays... It's a very mellow. It's a very mellow record, and it's uh, it's got Charles McPherson, Barry Harris, David Williams, and Billy Higgins. Um, it's good. I, I kind of liked it. Uh, it's very relaxed. It was recorded January fifth, nineteen seventy six. Uh, so like roughly eleven months before I was born. Um. I, I really enjoyed it. I think my, uh, I, I listened to side one. I do not know if I listen to side two. Um, 
but uh, it was really good. So, uh, it had uh, Charles McPherson on alto sax. Not a very prominent role on this record. Uh, the, the, the main focus was on Sam Jones' ch uh, cello playing. And he played it like a bass. Of course, he's a bassist. And he hadn't played cello in quite a long time, as uh, uh, noted on the, the jacket. And uh, he played he played cello on there, and, and he it was great. Um, so Charles McPherson played alto sax on that record, and um, also. Barry Harris was um, on this out record and played piano, and Barry Harris plays piano on this record. So it's kind of, uh, this is, uh, he plays, um, Charles McPherson plays alto sax, um, a little bit h higher? And a little bit more, kind of up here, a, a higher timbre than uh, tenor sax. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just uh, the, the mood I'm in after listening to Coltrane and then uh, on to uh, Alcone and Dexter Gordon. But uh, I didn't really care for this too much. Uh, I couldn't find really a whole lot of information on it. Uh, Charles McPherson is like, I want to say, uh, like, a, from what I was reading, uh, some sort of protege of Charlie Bird, uh, Charlie Parker uh, Bird, and uh, John Coltrane, because he was a lot younger than them. And, um,. So, I, I couldn't really get into the um, Today's Man. Charles, Charles McPherson, Today's Man. This was on Mainstream Records. And it came out in 73, I believe. Um, all of these records were in um, VG+, Plus, at least. Some of them were in Near Mint Minus. Um, and, in, uh, <laughs> I did notice that I will be, if I do this series some more, uh, I will be putting, forking out a little more cash than normal, uh, when going out looking for records. But I have no problem doing that right now. I've, instead of, uh, quantity, I kind of want to go for quality in doing this series. Hopefully I can actually, um branch out even further uh, next time um so that's it four degrees of john coltrane or the john coltrane family tree and that's it for this time um leave a comment if uh if this actually uh entertains you or you want to see more of it or if you'd rather just have me do whatever show classic rock records or what have you um and i'll get back to you so this is nate and i will see you next time